What's up, Gear Mortals? Trey Xavier here. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Track Metal Month is upon us. All of November is Toon Tracks Metal Month, and in order to celebrate Metal Month every year, it is my tradition here at Gear Gods to shoot some of my very favorite type of video to shoot, writing songs from random drum grooves in which we let the dice decide our fate. So the way this works is that I'm gonna roll the dice to determine all kinds of different things about how the song is actually gonna turn out. For example, the key, the tempo of the song, and most importantly, which MIDI drum grooves from Tune Track we're gonna use for each part of the song. And then new for this year, I'm also gonna be rolling the dice to determine which articulations in Easy Bass we're gonna use for each part. For example, pick, finger style, or slap and pop. Metal Month 2020 has already granted us some amazing gifts in the form of the brand new Easy X called Modern Metal. This is the Will Putney Easy X. It sounds awesome. I can't wait to hear it in the full mix. And then there's also a brand new EBX, which is an easy bass pack, and that one is called Metal, most appropriately. And it sounds awesome. That's what you're gonna be hearing today. Right here, we've got all the different libraries that we're gonna be pulling the grooves from. I'm gonna roll for one library per part of the song. For this episode, I'm changing up the format of the song a bit. I'm gonna try and be a little bit adventurous. You know, usually you start with an intro. That's how a lot of songs go. But some of the best songs just go right in. And I wanna do that with this one. Verse one is where we're starting. And then verse two, nothing in between. No chorus after the verse, just bang, verse one, bang, verse two. Pre-chorus, then chorus one, then a guitar solo. Cause I wanna play a guitar solo and get it out of the way early on. Verse three, chorus two, bridge, chorus three, and then an outro. First thing that we're gonna do is roll for the tempo and that's gonna be a pretty big deciding factor in how the song's gonna sound. So I'm gonna roll this 10 by 10. Twice, okay, we got a 90, and then we got a 100. So 190, and then I'm gonna roll another 10. Um, so 193. Next, we're gonna roll for which library each groove is gonna come from. So I'm rolling an eight-sided die because there's eight libraries that we're using. Three, which is power metal. Can't go wrong with power metal. Your, your boy loves the power metal. Verse two, we got a seven, which is metal machinery. The pre-chorus here is gonna be also seven, which is metal machinery. Chorus one, one black metal, love it. The solo is five thrash metal. I think that's gonna be great. I love a thrash solo. Verse three is also metal machinery. We keep rolling sevens. It's a good thing we're not playing craps. Oh, wait, maybe a seven is good in craps. I don't, I don't play, I don't know. Four, progressive foundry for chorus two. For the bridge. Another seven, metal machinery the song. <laughs> Man, maybe I should go to Vegas. Chorus three, another seven, what are the chances? And then the outro, if I roll another seven, I'm gonna scream. Okay, four, progressive foundry again, wow. The dice decide. So now we've got the libraries that we're gonna be pulling from. Now we gotta determine the easy bass articulations for each part. There are three to choose from, but I don't have a three-sided die because that's not a thing, so I'm gonna roll the four-sided die. If I roll a four, I just roll again. So our first verse, three is gonna be slap and pop for the first verse. Slap it a slap at the bass. And then we got a two, which is gonna be finger style for verse two. We got another slap. What did the five fingers say to the face? Slap. We got a finger style for chorus one. And then a one, we got a pick for the solo. We got another slap for verse three. And then we got pick for chorus two for the bridge. Slap. We got another slap for chorus three. I like a nice, I like a nice slap bass. Slap it again, a lot of slap. So now we're gonna be rolling for each of the individual grooves for each part of the song. So then in Easy Drummer, I'm gonna head over to the search tab, and then we're gonna go to power metal because that's what our first verse is gonna be. Then we need a verse, so I've organized them by name so that all the verses are together. And then I'm gonna roll a four and a 10 sided die to give us a number between one and 50 because there's, or one and 49, there's not usually more than that. So we got 13. Okay, so there's our first verse part. Then I just drag and drop it right into Pro Tools. I'll double it up just so that there's enough of it to be a full verse, because it's a little short if it's just one time through. Verse two is gonna be Metal Machinery, so then we head over to the Metal Machinery pack. Verse one, and we're gonna roll. We got a 38, 10, 20, 
Ooh, so there's our second verse. Then we need a pre-chorus, which is also coming from Metal Machinery. 20. Cool, I like that. Now we got a black metal first chorus, so we're gonna go to the black metal library. The black metal library. That's a place that I wanna go really bad. And then pull up the choruses. 27. Bleak. All right, for the solo, we're going thrash metal, so let's head to the thrash metal. There aren't specifically parts labeled as being for a solo, but I'm gonna just use a bridge, because that's kind of usually where the solo might go. So let's roll for that, and we got 14. It's a pretty unusual beat for a solo, but you know, that's why we're doing this. Verse three, back to metal machinery. 27. Ooh. Course two is gonna be from the Progressive Foundry. 23. Oh, it's in five, four. Oh. All right, guess we're gonna do a, a five, four chorus. The dice decide our fate. Now rolling from the bridge back to Metal Machinery once again. 18. All right, very, very metal. So there's our bridge. Don't have to go anywhere for this final chorus because we're already in metal machinery. Roll for that chorus, we got 26. Actually, that's kind of like our first verse, so not so far off. We've got an outro that's gonna be coming from the Progressive Foundry. There's not really an outro section, so I just always use an intro. 20. All right, so then that gives us this. Cool. So now we've got all the drum parts picked out for the whole song. We're running at about three minutes and 10 seconds. I might decide to extend some of the sections if you know it doesn't seem like they're long enough or whatever, or chop some stuff out. But we've got basically the whole thing. Now it's time to write some guitar parts. Before I start writing riffs, we gotta decide what key we're gonna start in. And I'm gonna use the 12 sided die for that, where one is C and everything goes from there. So three. So if C is one, then three would be C, C sharp, D. Key of D. This is my Skirvison, Skirva 10, eight string, and it's in standard tuning. So we're taking a very no holds barred, low bullshit approach with this song. We are going straight into the first verse. And as such, we gotta come out swinging. Our first drum part sounds thusly. And we're starting on a D. This to me sounds almost a little, like it could be a bit Dillinger-esque, maybe a little, you know, math core-y. Something like that. A cool, a cool tritones going on. And then I think the second time through, we'll do a nice little variation of that. So I just had kind of a funny revelation, and that is that the part that I came up with is six measures long. It's not a, a nice round eight, like everything we dropped in here is. So what I'm actually gonna do is cut two bars out of the drum part, rather than trying to make the part fit the drums exactly. When inspiration strikes, you kinda just gotta go with it, and the part came out as six bars and not eight, and I'm gonna roll with that. So now the second verse that we're just basically barreling right into after a short interlude, which I hope whoever our vocalist is is just gonna scream right through. We've got a, a variation because the drums are very different. So I'm gonna take the same idea and try and put a little twist on it. Maybe I'll have one guitar do that and the other one play the lick. Then the second half of the riff. We 
think I'm gonna double this up an octave for this part. And then something to round it out. Yeah, evil, evil. Cool, that takes us into the pre-chorus now. Hmm, something like that maybe? Maybe? Ooh, that's pretty spoopy. She's his spoopy. Then another slight variation, a little bit heavier this time. Why do I do this to myself? And then one last little variation on the riff for the pre-chorus. All right, now we have arrived at the chorus and I've gotten us back to D where we started, if you can believe it. So now we need something chunky. And we need a second chord. <laughs> yeah, just an inversion of the same thing. This is like a fun trick when you don't really wanna have a different chord exactly, but you want some kind of movement. Maybe that's the jam. It's a little bit black metal, kinda. Yeah, pretty evil sounding, I think. And then something slightly different. Okay, so now we've got ourselves a chorus. Might have to vary that up a little bit more because it is a little bit one thing over and over again as far as the rhythm goes, but for right now, this is all right. Next thing that's happening is the solo. Now, normally I would like probably write some chords first, but I kind of got a little bit of a something in my ear. Kind of sounds like, a, like 10 cents worth of Wes Houck. Solo's still gonna take a bit of work, but I kind of sketched it out a little bit, got a feel for where roundabout it's gonna be. Maybe? Of course it would have to be a hard one. Can't have any easy chords. One big old chord. And then it changes drastically. We get it, you like the faceless. And then back into the verse. Da 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 da. So I've just dropped the verse part in for this third verse. It works great. And then here we have the chorus, the second chorus. 
that's in 5-4. So mainly, honestly, I just kind of feel bad for whoever we're gonna be giving this to to put vocals on, because whatever they come up with for the first chorus, you're not gonna be able to copy and paste it, that's for sure. It's not gonna work exactly over the new, now, 5-4 chorus, where previously it was 4. So now I have to make a decision about how I'm going to adapt the first chorus part to this new 5-4. Do I take each part and extend it, each thing that happens in a measure and extend it by one beat? Or do I try and compress something? Do I just change it up a lot? I'm not really sure. That's eight beats, whereas now we'll have 10 beats. If I do it by two measure, because it's kind of a two measure phrase, right? Yeah, like that's two bars. I guess I'm just gonna have to experiment a bunch. I mean, that's, that's kind of sick. Sometimes I improvise something that's really sick and then I have to learn it. Why do I do this to myself? Super sick. So now we get to the bridge, which is this sort of t what I call tumble drumming. Normally in a bridge, I like a really big open melodic thing. I'm not really exactly sure what to do, but I have kind of an idea. I wanna bring it back to the riff, the big riff. But some kind of interesting variation. I was thinking about maybe moving it up an octave. Let's see how that works. One, two, three, four, five. Sounds a little, little sneaky. If I reduce it to sort of more of a core idea. Maybe do this. Okay, and then I wanna try. Then just to add some serious excitement going into the final chorus, I'm going to double this lead thing that I did up an octave again. I can do it. Then maybe uh, kick it up a notch by adding some kind of chuggy chords underneath. I like that, nice little descending line cliche type of thing. I don't know about the rhythm. Music! And with that, we have arrived at the final chorus, which is back to 4-4 now. Our second chorus was in 5-4. So what I've done is I've made it go twice as long so that we can get a double chorus out of the ending. I'm gonna go in and change what the power hand is doing for the second half. Go from uh, like the hi-hat to probably a crash. I'm gonna also add a second guitar part, give it a little bit more ambience, sort of fill out the harmony of it. Using just the same rhythm guitar part as the first chorus, it sounds like this. Sort of a double time feeling. Fills it out a pretty good bit, I think. So the first half of that lead part's gonna work for this next set of chords, but then I'm gonna have to change it up for the last chord. So I wonder what I'm gonna do.
Yeah. So now the only part that's left in our song form is the outro and I would like to do a kind of wild variation on what we've already got. To really bring it back home, it's still the same riff, but we're gonna do some crazy rhythmic stuff with it. Yeah, I really like this kind of uh, offbeat thing that it hits. Maybe give it a little stank like that. Yeah. That feels nice. I like that. Yeah. So I think that sounds pretty cool for our outro. I'm gonna add a little tag at the end. So I'm gonna have what I just did go twice, but then at the end, we're gonna add a little something, something. Something like that. So do I want to do that in octaves or do I want to harmonize? So here's how the ending bit sounds with the tag. I think that puts a nice neat little button on it. I just kind of like programmed a couple little simple drum bits in there to really round it off. And now I'm gonna try turning this outro into a bass line, into a slap bass line using Easy Bass. So I'm gonna be using the audio tracker function in Easy Bass and the way that that works is it's gonna send the DI track from the guitar part that I just recorded into Easy Bass and it's gonna turn it into MIDI and that's gonna make my life way, way easier. It's gonna be a whole lot less work rather than like poking it in with a keyboard or with the mouse. At least it'll give me the raw material exactly as I played it on the guitar and then I can tweak it to make it a little more like a bass line and less just like following the guitar part. So that goes thusly. So then that gives us this. Like instant, very, very close to what I played bass. But we rolled for slap bass, so we have to make it slap bass. To make it slap bass, all we have to do is hit the add MIDI to song track, go to the grid editor, select it, and then we're gonna head down here to slap and pop. So now I'm gonna have to arrange it so that it's actually slap bass-esque and not just slapping what they would have played because slap bass isn't just an articulation, it's a whole way of playing. So I, I'm gonna have to arrange it a bit better, but to get a slap bass sound, it's almost no effort at all. So now I'm gonna go through and add bass to the entire rest of the song, polish the whole thing off, give it whatever else it needs, little tweaks and stuff, probably put in a couple different drum fills just so that they're not repeating every time the same groove happens and all of that. I'm gonna finish it off and then I'm gonna hand it off to our guest vocalist who's gonna put their vocal idea over the top of it, finish the song as a song with vocals, lyrics, and the whole nine yards. And then right now you're gonna get to hear the whole final thing and watch us play it all the way through, so let's do it!
All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Big thanks to TuneTrack for sponsoring this video for Metal Month. As you heard, the new Metal EBX and Modern Metal EZX for Easy Drummer are super duper sick sounding. Big thanks to our special guest vocalist. And as always, if you haven't already, mash that subscribe button, smack the bell to join the notification squad. <laughs> Drop me a like and leave a comment in the comment section below letting me know what you thought of this track. I wanna know, and I'll see you real soon.